Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to do a simple cut mould for recasting figures. So I'm using this Mega Construct figure that I brought from Amazon. So these figures are pretty cool as they're easy to pose. So I actually shot this video about a month before I made this channel. So there are a few things I do here, I do a little bit differently now. So I've now got my original figure and a figure that I made and custom painted. So now I'll show you what I did to make my own figures. So I start by working out how I want to pose him. Then I glue him to the foam board so he doesn't move. I'm doing a simple one part mould using the plastic cup to surround the figure. which I then hot glue into place. I'm using a two part silicone mould which I have used before. This I brought off Amazon and is very easy to use as you mix up equal parts. I will leave some links in the description of where you can get all the items that I've used. Then it's just a case of mixing the two parts in together and then mixing them up to its one consistent colour. Then it's just a case of pouring it onto my figure so it's completely covered. To make sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies I move it around and tap it a little bit. This also helps to remove any air bubbles. Then leave it to cure for 30 minutes. So now it's fully cured I can take it out of its casing. So now we have to cut the mould to get our original figure out. And that's why this is called a cut mould. So the best way to cut the mould is to do a zigzag pattern. This way when we put the two halves together they have something to align to and just makes for a better connection. And then it's the case of peeling the two halves apart making sure not to damage the mould. Depending on how intricate the figure is, this can take a bit of time. But you definitely don't want to rush this bit and you don't want to pull away or break any of the mould. If any bits do come apart, make sure you remove all the pieces of the figure from the mould. I'm using the two part liquid plastic which I have used before and again this is from Amazon. It's also mixed to a ratio of one to one which again just makes things so much easier to do. It gets a good stir just to mix it all together. And then slowly pour into the mould. Every now and then I'll give it a little tap and a shake just to try and help the mixture get to all the ends of the piece. I also want all the air bubbles to come up to the top. This is then left for 30 minutes to set. Now it's cured I can take it out of the mould and see what I've got. So unfortunately his arms didn't come out so it's probably due to air pockets. But other than his arms not coming out, he looks pretty good. So I'm going to try again to see if I can do it any better. This time I'm going to try and pour a little bit directly into the arms.
So this time it's a little bit better. He's got a bit more of an arm, but he's still missing it from below the elbow. So let's try one more time. Still no arm from below the elbow, but that's fine as I have plenty of spare arms that I can use. So I've got several figures now, so I'm going to see which one's the best and that's the one I'm going to work on. So there's a few extra little bits of plastic that just need trimming off. So I'm going to drill out the upper part of the arm so I can attach a lower part of an arm. So now the holes are drilled out, regular arms just pop in. Now to add his claw. So I'm using one of the custom bases I've made. I will leave a link in the description showing how I made them. Then it's just a case of gluing my figure to the base. As there's a bit of a gap around his feet, I'm just gonna add in some extra little stones. There was one last thing that didn't quite come out from the mould and that was his weapon. So I'm just using this little bit of Lego piece which I've drilled in one end and I'm just going to cut it to length. And there we go, so now he's all ready for painting. So I took him outside to give him a grey undercoat and hot glued the base to a bottle just to make it easier to hold him whilst painting. So I start by getting a base colour on. So silver for all his armour. And I really wasn't too sure what colour to actually paint him. So I thought I'd go over Barbarian Flesh and then add some extra colours on top. So at this stage you don't have to be too neat, it's just a case of getting all the colours on and then later on we use a smaller finer brush to do all the small detail work. That's all the base colours done, but I think his skin looks too human-like, so I'm just going to add a bit of green tone to it. I'm now going to use a flesh wash on his skin just to darken some areas.
Now I'm using a strong tone wash just to darken his armour so it doesn't look too nice and new and shiny. I'm dry brushing the stones just to give them some texture. As well as dry brushing some of the armour just to give it some highlights and some scratch marks. I'm adding little tufts of grass just to make it look a bit more realistic. Okay, so I'm quite pleased with how he's turned out, but I don't think his skin tone is quite right for the Predator. So I'm going to change it to a stone wall grey. Yeah, so I'm much happier with this colour. Seems a bit more alien looking now. So it's just a case of popping him off the bottle and then he's all done. And there he is, one finished alien predator. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and leave some comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video and what you might want to see me do in the future. Here's another video you can click on to see more of what I do. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell, just so you get informed of when my videos come out. If you are able, guys, it'd be great if you could share this on Twitter, your Facebook page or Facebook group, Discord and Reddit, that'd be awesome. Okay, guys, that's it. Bye for now.